Welcome everyone to the next video in this series of creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow. In this video, we're going to look at the leading records in ServiceNow. So this is actually be the last resource that we create in our API. And if you've watched the previous videos for creating records and getting records and updating records, you'll find here that most of this is repetition. The only thing that we're really changing here is the glide record method, which will be a delete instead of an insert or an update. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll come back to our scripted REST API record and we'll come down to our resources and create a new one. We'll give this one a name, delete vehicle. The method will be delete this time and the path will be similar to the very first get that we used, which will be slash vehicle slash and then vin as a path parameter. So in other words, for this resource, we're only permitting the deletion of one record at a time per request. We'll come into our script and I'll paste a pre-existing script that I created a little bit earlier. And let's just walk through this again quickly like we did with the last ones. Initially, we create an empty array as always for our answer that will push to the object that we send in the response body. We declare a vin variable to get the path parameter. If none is provided, we'll throw an error. And then we use that to query the database for our vehicles table. If we don't find any records for that, VIN, we will throw an error there as well. And then we go ahead and simply delete that record. And once we've done that, we'll then send a confirmation or in the response body to say that we've deleted the record. Note also the last JSON property here, the message. So yeah, you know, we're not restricted here in JSON to fields that we actually have in a table in our database. You can define whatever object here that you like. So let's save that. And we'll go ahead and test it. So we'll refresh the REST API Explorer page here to get the latest in our API. We'll switch over to the API here and then we'll go to the delete vehicle method here and we'll need to specify a VIN. So if I come back to my table here, I've already got some records here that I've marked for deletion. So let's pick the VIN for the first vehicle here and go ahead, pop that in. Again, the request and response formats are the same, JSON, and we click on send, we get a 200 response back and we get confirmation that the vehicle has been deleted there. Simple. Again, repetition from previous videos because once we get our heads around the fact that the script is being used to perform the operation and we're using the Glide Record API for these operations, then really the only thing that's changing is the method that we're using. So we can go back, just confirm that it's gone now. Yes, we only have four records now instead of five. And maybe just to round off the discussion, we'll take another vehicle's VIN here and we'll create the corresponding message here in Postman for deleting a vehicle. And this time it will be a delete or just reuse the same URI that we did before. Uh, this time uh, I'm going to hard code the VIN here and just pop that one then that I just copied. Again, authenticate using our regular integration user, send the request. And after a short period of time, we get the response back again that that vehicle has now been deleted. If we come back to our table again, refresh. We've now got three vehicles. So that's it, everyone. We've created our last resource in our scripted REST API for deleting vehicles in our table. As you can see, much of this has been repetition from previous videos where we've gotten records, we've updated records and created new records. As I said, the only thing that really has changed here is the JavaScript method that we're using, the glide record method. Of course, the HTTP method is also different as well. And that's something we're going to discuss in the next video. We're going to compare the two methods, HTTP methods and JavaScript methods, because when you're creating scripted REST APIs, you need to ensure that the JavaScript method that you use is appropriate for the HTTP method that you have selected. So stay tuned for that one.